Hey guys, Munchies here and welcome to another Zenless Zone Zero video and in this video I'm going to be going over how Bernice works as a sub DPS. So as a sub DPS she is fitted into teams that support other characters, mainly anomaly characters like Jane or Piper. So I'll be kind of going over how her kit works and how she works in synergy with these characters. So I'm going to go over her skills first. So basically your priority in leveling these skills is to get her core skill all the way up first. And when you read this extremely long word salad that she has under her core skills, which is an ongoing problem in gotcha games in my opinion, um, basically what it describes is she has an effect to where every time you attack with her hold down skills with her auto attack, like when you hold down her basic attack or if you hold down her EX special, um, whether you single hold or double hold, I'll go over those in a minute, it'll trigger a scorch effect. And what the scorch effect does is basically it consumes her heat gauge to keep the burn effect going on it while you're attacking the enemy with another DPS um, like Jane or uh, Grace, whoever other anomaly that you're using with her, using her with. She is a uh, disorder team member, so basically you just spam disorder damage on top of anomaly damage when you're playing her in your teams. And her additional ability just makes it so you build fire anomaly insanely quick uh, when you switch back to her when you trigger the scorch effect. And I don't know why they did this, but they split the term Scorch and Afterburn. So the Scorch is basically a debuff and the Afterburn effect is the effect that you get uh, when you're hitting an enemy that has Scorch on it. I don't know why they split these two up, but that's how they worded it. But for the most part, I'll point this out here. When you do your attacks that trigger the Scorch effect, it leaves this debuff on enemies. They make it a little hard to see. I wish they had put this above the boss's head. But there's this little flame that indicates that the enemy is scorched and then when you trigger it you'll get the afterburn effect and what that does is it'll consume her gauge every time you trigger the afterburn effect so we're going to go ahead and apply our scorch here and both this spinning basic attack move and the flamethrower now if you keep an eye on bernice's gauge every time i trigger the scorch afterburn effect her gauge drops so I'll go over one more cycle here. So basically you kind of alternate between her EX special and her basic attacks to kind of manage her meters. But once you apply it, you switch to the other DPS. And if you keep an eye out here, you can see that her meter just drops every time you trigger the afterburn from the Scorch debuff. So she has two EX specials. Um, basically one, when you hold it down, you tap it once, you hold it down and she'll do a single flamethrower. And this is from a standstill point and when you have this up you can dodge attacks in this so you just move your directional stick while you're holding this down and you will be able to dodge attacks the other thing that she has so if you chain into certain attacks or if you just double tap the ex special and hold it you can use the double flamethrower and this is a committed move so when you do it uh, your character is committed. She can't dodge like she can with the single flamethrower. There are certain th ways to just get straight into the double flamethrower just holding down the EX special button. So for example, um, you can just do the hold down on the basic attack and once you finish the spin and you hold the EX special after, it will launch the double flamethrower. But basically her kit in itself is to throw out debuffs and it's all about, in my opinion, just managing her meters. So you never want to be starved of both of the meters. And if that ever is the case, try and get her ultimate up and the ultimate will charge her fuel meter. So you'll have fuel and then you can do a hold down basic attack and that will assist you in charging your energy much quicker. So you can do those double flamethrowers. The single flamethrower is okay, but in my opinion, if you can do the double flamethrower, just commit to the double flamethrower because it builds uh, fuel extremely quickly and it does a decent amount of damage so you can have that and she has some unique traits to her so her ultimate actually gives you an assist so when you trigger her ultimate the assist icon will pop up and you can switch to your other anomaly character that you are playing in the party and this is extremely helpful because you're continuously building your fire anomaly while possibly also triggering a disorder while you're doing this and 
you keep the fire debuff going with the anomaly character. It's just you're able to kind of take advantage of her damage while having another character on the field. And it actually does quite a decent amount of damage. I feel like comps like this where you have these double anomaly teams with a sub DPS and then a main one, they are really good in like maybe longer fights because shorter fights, everything tends to die really quick. But in a longer fight, I feel like you get much more damage output from a comp like this. And while we're on the subject of team composition, she fits fairly well with uh, either Caesar or Piper as your third. Um, I actually prefer Caesar because she gives a shield. So when you're committing to those double flamethrower things, if you get hit, you don't get dinged for as much damage and you're basically upping the survival of your team when you have Caesar on there. Um, she's like a little a safer pick, but if you don't have her, Piper works perfectly fine. And for the other DPS that runs with her, there is an Electro version that you can play with her with uh, Grace and Rena if you have them. And the other two fairly common teams is either Piper and Jane, or Piper or Jane, excuse me. So you'll have Piper and Bernice, or you'll have Jane and Bernice with either Caesar or Piper as the third. And just to show her ultimate assist, it is a really short window. So when you do it, make sure you're paying attention because it goes away relatively quickly. So make sure you are paying attention when you ult to get ready to switch to your other DPS. Now I'm going to go back to the skill screen real quick. She has a very unique line where in the first paragraph at the very end, it says the uh, pretty much the afterburn effect, the damage increases 1% up to a max of 30% damage from the afterburn effect is considered assist attack damage. Now I did a dumb thing and I was raising my character at the same time as the skill itself for the assist attack damage. So I don't know if the damage increase was coming from me leveling the character up or if it was from me leveling the skill up. Normally I level one up first and then I'll test the other one out to check, but I made a mistake. So if anyone does know, please let me know in the comments for sure if the assist skill level actually affects the damage from this in her core passive. Because if that is the case, it makes her a unique anomaly character because she's the first one that has a uh, larger benefit from leveling up the skills than the other ones do. As far as her W engine goes, the only one that I would stay away from is Roaring Tide, um, which is the one right next to the one that I have equipped that I have on Grace right now because I switched them over. But if you do have Grace's W engine, it works really well on her. All of them are pretty solid, Weeping Gemini and uh, Rainforest Gourmet, as well as the Electro Lip Gloss. So if you have the Battle Piss weapon for Electro Lip Gloss, that also works pretty decently on her. Um, yeah, the only one that I would stay away from is Roaring Tide. Now, as far as her gear goes, I highly recommend the Chaos Jazz set. So this is the new set that they gave uh, the game just for Bernice. So the, this four set plus two set of Inferno Metal or two set of Freedom Blues. And then there is also a third option. So if you are struggling with energy regen, you can give her a two set of the Swing Jazz set, but only if you're struggling for energy regen. Otherwise you take a damage loss. Now for the slots in the sixth slot, you want Anomaly Mastery. In the fifth slot, you want Fire Damage, Attack or Attack Percentage or Pen Percent. And then on the fourth slot, you want Anomaly Proficiency. And as far as her substats go, Anomaly Proficiency is great for her. Attack Percent is also really good. And then if you do get some flat attack and pen, she does make use of that as well. Anywho, that's all for this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, anything of that sort, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and sub on the way out. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.